Howdy, everybody, and welcome to the next exciting chapter of Dreams of Infinity. I am Matthew R. Dawson, your friendly neighborhood host and magic keeper, and joining me around my virtual table tonight are Ashley Ein, Hannah, Kira, Los, Stephen, and Tensei. Say hi, everyone. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, everyone. 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 <laughs> Love it. Now, before we, we begin... We understand the assignment. <laughs> yes, you do. You do indeed. Now, before we begin, we do have a few announcements to get through, starting with the first of our two sponsors for tonight's show, HeroForge. HeroForge offers fully customizable tabletop miniatures with dozens of fantasy species and thousands of parts to choose from. Their easy-to-use design tools let you build your perfect miniature online using a fully 3D in-depth character creator right in your web browser which is where we built all the tokens for this game. You can build yours today at HeroForge.com. Our second sponsor for tonight's show is XSplit. XSplit is a high-quality virtual webcam background remover that works with your already existing webcam. Using this program, you can protect your privacy while you work or play remotely. You can blur, remove the background entirely, or even put your favorite picture as your background instead, which is what I do. You can download the app today at xsplit.com, and if you use the coupon code RANDOM with a capital R, you can get 10% off of your purchase. You can find our referral link in the chat and show descriptions. Now this week our schedule is a little wonky because of the 4th of July, um, but next Wednesday we will be airing the um, Sonnet of Blood, a Curse of Strahd campaign, as usual. You can keep up to date on everything we do here on Random Rhapsody by following us on Facebook as Random Rhapsody TV and on Twitter as <coughs> at random underscore Rhapsody. And that should do it for the announcements. So join us as we return to Laropa City and continue on with the Maginites as they investigate the dreams of infinity. We're back. So for this campaign, we are doing our recaps a little bit differently. Whoever does the recap at the start of the session will receive the random Rhapsody coin, which they can redeem for one free reroll during that session. Now, if I'm the one who does the recap, I get the coin as well, and I'm going to redeem it at the worst possible moment for our heroes, so you know they don't want to let me have it. So. With that in mind, Manginites, who would like to tell us what happened last time on Dreams of Infinity? I'll do it. I okay. totally haven't already written one. <laughs> okay. Aisha, tell us what happened the last time we met on Dreams of Infinity. Let's revisit what happened on the last magical episode of Dreams of Infinity. Final remaining member of the Nighty Knights, the quiet but imposingly smart David Copeland, whisked away to a preschool year presentation for principal, now being Dean Vulcan, in the van. Um, there was also the totally spooky, spooky Melody Mabbitt. I think she has a card of gold, though. 
the hardworking uh, Katrina Saunders. I will, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself there. Levi Calloway, his uncle makes the coolest clothes. Uh, and Damien Diaz, I don't know them very well, but they seem earnest. Oh, and me, Aisha Yamamoto, I was in the front seat. We were all pretty tired, smoozing and all that, but fate had something else in store. But that question, we all died. Well, we almost died. A lot happened next. A magical cat appeared and offered all of us powers. At first, it was only going to be two of us. But since David was already a magic knight, he helped all of us join the order. But it made his soul gem grow a bunch of cracks. Not that I actually know that in canon yet. I hope he will be okay. The next morning, we woke. And it was like we hadn't almost died. And we all had our own soul gems, too. The cat introduced himself. They were the Wanderer and David, I mean, Cacophony's help. We all learned how to transform into our Magi Knight forms. We learned about outsiders. And even more excitingly, we fought some and saved a bunch of grown-ups. Wait, I'm 18. So it's a weird if I say that, like, I'm not also one. There were some cultists, and one got away, but we defeated the big monster they summoned, and no one got seriously hurt. I got down to 2 HP, but that's okay. I'm so excited to see what happens next. Come join me as I seek the light of the shining stars along with my new friends. <laughs> Love it. Well done, Aisha. There you go. Boop. There's your random Rhapsody coin. You get to use that whenever you want this session, only this session. So make sure you use it before the end. Okay, Magi Knights. So there you all are, standing in the middle of a wooded area in the middle of Laropa Park. It's the dead of night. The moon overhead is nearing its zenith right now, telling you that it's getting very, very late. The waxing gibbous moon is in a lightly clouded sky, which allows for a small amount of ambient light, aided, of course, by the illumination provided by the soul crystals you all have on your person. You have all gathered together by this point, and all around you are the unmoving forms of the unconscious adults you had all beaten senseless just a few moments ago. But I doubt that really has your attention right this second. Now, I imagine that your focus is entirely on the barely more than a foot and a half foot wide puddle that the last remaining cultist had disappeared into a few moments ago. Um, Nova Seeker. You were the closest one to um to that individual he actually broke off from you you got in some good hits um missed the last swing and then just watch as they jumped and kind of did a scooby-doo dive into the um in, into the water and after that there was barely even a ripple on the water after he literally dove into a puddle that is barely more than an inch deep and yet he's gone so completely how in the hell did that happen you're asking what? me no no i this is <laughs> I, I'm, I'm more just saying in general okay gotcha well the one may have escaped but there are two others remaining who are unconscious on the ground not to mention the eight other disheveled adults in the heap a few feet away from you so, Magi Knights, what would you all like to do in this moment now that you have um, emerged victorious? I'd like to walk over to the puddle and, and poke at it with my sword and see if it's just a standard puddle or if there's any remnants of like a, a gateway or something that was left. Yeah, absolutely. You walk over and just kind of stab your put your sword into that puddle, and it hits barely more than a tip worth in. It's literally less than an inch uh, deep, and like you kind of splash a little bit, and you can see the the mud under that. No signs of anything that that was even there. Okay, uh, I'm gonna look around and see. Do we do have we? Um... 
we caused a bit of a ruckus, so I'm looking around to see if, if we've attracted any unwanted attention. Absolutely. Go ahead and make a perception check. Okay. Shit. Right. Character sheet. And perception is the same no matter whether I'm in my Imaginite form or student form, yeah. right? Yes. Okay, cool. Groovy. Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> right. Never, everything's it good. Is, yeah, it is eerily quiet. You might be able to hear like a, a bit of cicada in the distance, but other than that, you're looking around, and uh, other than the occasional street light or um, park lights, there's nothing else around. Can I look at the unconscious people and see if maybe we've seen them in town before or if they have anything like jewelry or weapons on them that might give us some clue as to who they are? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and make for me, um, let's see, I guess an investigation check? Okay. It's a 14. Okay. You go over to the, the nearest uh, cultist, one of the ones who, uh, let's say this is the one in the black robes, that, or the the tan robes, that's the one closest to you. Um, you walk over to the one with the tan, the tan robes and begin searching through him, looking over. The first thing you find is he, it ha he has a long, slender, almost stiletto-like knife in his um, belt. You quickly bend down and pick it up and pull it out, and the blade itself is dark, dark black. The handle itself seems very unornate. It's, it's simple wood, um, but very darkly polished. But as you pick it up and you begin glancing over it, you see the tip start to dissolve away. The blade itself, as you're holding it and looking at it, um, just completely dissolves, almost like a like a, an Avengers blip, leaving nothing in your hand. I wanted to keep that. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. You continue searching over the um, unconscious individual in robes. Um, unfortunately does not have an ID or a wallet on him or anything like that. Um, he, you, you, you look him over and you've lived in Loropa City for a while, but it's just random vague adult. No one who like really stands out to you as someone like you've maybe seen our TV or goes to the, the stores or shops that you frequent. Okay. Kat, you want to um, go and um, check to see if all the unconscious people are okay? Yeah, check to see if they're okay, if they're hurt, if they're... Well, make sure they're not dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was that's some mention of it, it would only knock them out, but she wants to make sure. <laughs> no, that's absolutely fair. Go ahead and make a medicine check. And if everybody wants to kind of work together and search over all of the, the, the unconscious people and the cultists, let's just do um, a group um, investigation check real quick. Sure. Sounds good. So what do we do to do a group in investigation? 22. No. Just, roll. Just, just roll an investigation and then we'll yeah. average it out. Yes, exactly. Not literally average, but whatever, whatever the DM, yeah. But yeah, I'm specifically tying up the cultists. Okay, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, no, knowing you and you, even in your your um, your student persona, day to day, you probably have a lariat uh, or a lariat with you at all times. Yeah, I just I have feel rope. like 
So you can absolutely be hog tying the cultist um, up as this is all going on. Um, for your thir- your medicine check, um, what did you roll? Uh, where was it again? Thirteen. Thirteen. Your thirteen medicine check reveals that they are indeed unconscious. They seem to be like in a very deep um, unconscious state. Like you, you kind of walk up to them and lightly tap them on the cheek a little bit, trying to get them awake, but they don't even react. They seem to be in a, a very deep sort of slumber. A, a couple of them are snoring a little bit, but all of them are breathing. Uh, you can find pulses on everybody, so they are definitely just unconscious. Okay. Now, let's see. Um, everyone, go ahead and... Um, Go, we're going to go around the circle and tell me what your investigation check is, starting with Star Seeker. Three. Nova Seeker. Ten. Cacophony. Uh, it didn't show up in the chat for some reason, but 14. Okay. I see it. Oh, I see it. I can see it. Oh, it's not on mine. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Love roll 20. Love it. Uh, Sky Seeker. Yeah. 17. Justice Seeker. 22. Soul Seeker. 17 also. Overall, a, a pretty decent spread. In total, um, like you, you search every person as um, Justice Seeker is tying up the two cultists. Um, they, all of them, very, very pointedly do not have wallets or purses or IDs on them. Actually, it, it almost seems like their pockets have been purposely empty. A couple of them have like the pockets pulled out and are just hanging on the sides. Um, you don't even find like loose change or, or pocket lint among them. Uh, Cacophony, you've seen this before. Like um, when you were dealing with the, the cult that was dedicated to Chrysanthemum, they would typically um, find people and kidnap them and warp their minds and and take everything away so that nobody could identify them if and when they were captured. So this is not a a new tactic to you. The one thing you do find as you're you're completing your search and you're kind of getting really, really frustrated. um, Justice, you had finished up and you started helping as well. And you notice there's a little bit of um, a couple piles of just junk and debris on the field um, over near the bushes you, you find like some bottles and, and um, like empty beer bottles and uh, a, an open condom wrapper and, and, and stuff like that and you're like oh that's that's nasty I, I, I don't want anything to, to do with that but as you're walking away something does catch your eye underneath um, one of the nearby bushes it's a little it's it's kind of a large coin about this size and it, it pe- looked to be made of plastic you think to yourself at first casino chip and you bend down to check it out but then you find that it is actually a sobriety chip um marking six months sober on the back of it it has the name of the church that the um that wherever they they got it from um, which reads uh, St. Mary's. Okay. I will show it to everyone and then pocket it. This is uh, quite odd. Why would there be uh, a uh, chip for the no drinking of booze on Where the battlefield? Where did battle you find field? that? Uh, over by blah blah blah. <laughs> it, it, it was very, it was very close to that um, scene of several bottles of uh, booze and uh, a condom wrapper and like some other detritus and debris um, near the bushes. And you can point out over there. So... Does it belong to any of the guys, or is it something completely unrelated? Yeah, that was. I my assume question. it doesn't have a name on it. Uh, no, it wouldn't have like a person's name or anything like that. Yeah. 
it literally uh the the i don't know if you've ever seen a sobriety chip before but usually on the one side it says specifically how long they've been sober the other side has the name of whatever um place has the um the aa meeting at. yeah um does it look like there was a party here preceding this like was this like a, a remnants of a party or does it look like a uh you know private thing if that makes sense make an insight check Another four. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Very insightful. So Super insightful. Yeah, so, and, and it, it's really difficult to tell. Um, there's only like two or three beer bottles and that sort of thing. Sure. So. It yeah. Almost, uh, um, sorry. Go ahead, Karen. Well, I was just gonna say it almost seems like they were trying to throw it away. Like maybe they gave up, and that's why there's beer bottles and the coin here. Um, yeah. How old do the beer bottles look? Um, judge, like they're not dirtier or, or like caked in mud or anything like that. You, you would guess maybe a few days at most. Okay. Uh, question. Yeah. Um. So we're still transformed right now. Yes. Um. Do we have access to like? Oh, this is the '90s. I don't have a a phone camera. Never mind. Yeah, no, unfortunately, you wouldn't. <laughs> um, one thing you do spot as you're all finishing up your your, your search here is uh, that cat, the wanderer. You all look back towards the um, that little uh, rocky outcropping that was near where the um, ritual circle is, and you see the cat just kind of sitting there on top of the stones, just laying there, tail curled up around him. And it just seems like he's been watching you um, as you're all um, searching around. Hello, monsieur. Or is it monsieur? Or madame, perhaps? Mixture, perhaps? Uh, um, well, sometimes I feel he, sometimes I, I really don't. Uh, he, they's fine. Not eBay. He, they. <laughs> I'm looking at my own CC. Yes, we must sell the talking cat on eBay. I don't even think you eBay know, was around in 96. Uh, it was. It was? Wow. I think so. I think it I think it was mid-90s when eBay was like a physical bookstore. I could have sworn it was like 88 or 98, 99, but I could be wrong. Anyway. Um... Whenever Beanie Babies uh, came around. Sep September 3rd, 1995. Wow. There you go. Well, anyway, um, the cat's sitting there, and as once you all kind of see him and he realizes he's been spotted, he stands up and does, you know, that big old cat stretch where the front paws and uh, the head goes down, but the back is still up. Um, and then he kind of shrugs a little bit and says, well... Um, looks like you've gotten the investigation part um, well in hand. Good job, everybody. That was uh, that was really impressive. The way you took down most of those cultists and all of those. Um, well, I guess the easiest thing to call them would be uh, drones, or um, yeah, I guess drones would be the thing I would call them. Um, uh, and he kind of jumps down off of the stones and comes patting his way over towards them. He looks at, at you all and he says, Well, um, that right there is uh, a lot of uh, what you do as Magi-Knights. Deal with uh, these uh, poor, misguided people who end up either being drawn to the outsiders or forced against their will to serve them. And he kind of prods the the horde of uh, brainwashed humans a little bit with one paw. Now, there is some good news in all this. At, besides the fact that you freed them from the control the, the outsiders have over them. But whenever you do so, a little bit of that energy still remains. We can draw it out and we can use that to help uh, make you all 
more powerful. You see, the spectral energy that remains can be drawn into something called a gloom gem. And these gloom gems can be used to create things like shards of power or um, inscribe runes on your weapons or armor. And there's actually quite a, uh, a lot of things they can do. And as he's explaining this, you can actually feel that knowledge being imparted into your minds, um, which is on the handout that I'm getting ready to show y'all. Uh, what is it with mentors and screwing with our DNA? <laughs> it's like the Matrix. Why is it a gloomy name? Downloading it into our brains. Well, you've, you've, you've all ha have access to all these handouts and, and that sort yeah. of thing, but um, now to 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 actually draw them out, you're all going to need something. Uh, David has one already, but the rest of you need one. And he kind of jumps up, and as he does, those bat wing or dragon wings spread outward, and he kind of hovers there and. You know, in Sailor Moon, in the first season, whenever Luna had to give Usagi one of uh, her objects, she kind of does this little flip and then poof, it appears. That's sort of what happens here. But instead, five little long grayish crystals appear in the air and go flying towards each one of you. Um, it, it, honestly, when you grab it, it just looks like a gray piece of uh, quartz crystal. The Wanderer says to you, now, ah, this bit's a, a, a little bit technical, but basically what we're doing is we're going to pass these crystals over these, um, these cultists here and draw the, the residual spectral energy away from them, removing the last traces of the outsider's influence from them. All you have to do is hold your crystal out and focus your intent and you'll be able to do this. Now, for the mechanics of this, of course, I also have a handout for this as well. Hang on, find here. Bloom gems. So essentially what you do is um, whenever, whenever you defeat and the minions of the, the spectral outsiders, you draw forth this energy from the, the ones you fight. Everybody is um, given, well, basically every enemy that you defeat is represented by a specific dice. For low minions, it, they're not very big. For higher ones, the, the dice gets higher. Um, then each one of you gets to roll one of these dice. Whoever um, whatever that roll is, we all add it up together, what the, the numbers of these rolls are. And then we multiply that by your reputation level, um, which is a, a minimum, which one plus your reputation level for a minimum of one. So right now you're not going to be able to double it or anything like that because you don't have a reputation level, but um, you're at least going to be able to get that number of blue gems. So for this battle here that we fought, there are um, f there is four d4 and two d8 dice represented in gloom gems. So fortunately, there's six of you. So four of you are going to roll a d4. Two of you are going to roll a d8. Now, who here is proficient in mysticism? Uh, let I believe me I am, but let me check. No. Yes. No. Nope. I mean, like, I. Yes, I am. It's not my highest, but I have more than one in there. You but know. do you have proficiency? Yeah, it's it's specifically proficiency that we're we're looking for. No. Nope. So it's just Kira, um, just Melody that has uh, proficiency in mysticism? I think so. Okay. So 
Melody, um, since she has um, proficiency, she is able to re-roll the dice. Um, one or at least one dice can be re-rolled per uh, person who's proficient. So if you roll low on one of those dice, you can re-roll it because she has proficiency. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, so, I, I, I also said yes. Oh, you do? Oh, I didn't hear you. So we got two. Gotcha. My bad. So for right now, we have two. Um, so two dice can be re-rolled, not one. Does anyone have a preference of which um, dice they roll, or does nobody care? Don't care. I'd like to roll a d4, please. I'll roll a d100. <laughs> Oh, in that case, I'll roll a D thousand. D twenty. I mean, I mean if we're, you're, if we're just asking. You're all very adorable, <laughs> and I appreciate the attempt. I'll roll a D eight. <laughs> so, so dejected. <laughs> just tell me what to roll. Oh, D four. The reroll dice don't have to be the ones that are being rolled by the people with mysticism. No. Okay. No. Cool, then. So if both D8s yeah. suck, you can re-roll both D8s. It's okay. just one, every person gets to roll one. It doesn't really matter who does which one. So just cool. two people, real quick, roll me a D8. There's Got a five. Um, okay. Sorry, you said two people roll a D8. I thought we were all just rolling. No, it's yeah. It doesn't matter. It's fine. We'll take that, that four roll, figures. Cause... Yeah, it's a four. It's a max okay. roll. Okay. I'll roll if no one else is. Hey, a five I'm and a seven. Star Seeker did it. Yeah. Huh. We're rolling really good. See? <laughs> Not me. Yeah. There we go. There's so, one. Okay, <laughs> there's there's one. So you can re-roll two dice. Who else are we waiting on? Aren't we rolling six dice? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that was six. Never mind. Yeah. Let's think, just re-roll the we, one. I think we only re-roll the one, yeah. Are We're not right? forced to use two, right? You don't yeah. have to. Start with yeah. the one, and can if you get another one, can you re-roll it? I'll allow it. Nice. I don't know if there's a specific uh, thing that says not to, but I'm going to allow for this one. So, Cat, so that's it... you. Yeah, so Cat, re-roll that D4. Okay. Hopefully it's better. Three. Hey. Oh, right hey. Three. Yeah. Let's take it. That's not bad. So, okay. So, Three. 16. Or 26. I was like, what? No. More no, that. 26. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, 26. So, in total, all six of you gain 26 um, Bloom Gems. Nice. Is that 26 each or 26 to divide? 26 each. each. I'm going to put that no in division. my gold piece section. Oh, that's what I'm also going to do. Oh, yeah. GP is for gloom points. Mm -hmm. That works. <laughs> Where is that? Underneath the tax and spellcasting above your equipment. I think I also gave you one of those boxes that says gloom gems in it. But either one, you, it doesn't matter. You didn't. Maybe. I, I made one for myself, but... Gloom gloom points is is very funny to me. So yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm fine instead with that. of gold, instead of like GP. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. So instead of gold pieces, it's gloom points. Matt, right. sure. Twenty six. Twenty six. I like that. When you get so it goes to in the it, money. Okay. Posted a, about a question in the thing. Yeah, a couple of people have said they wanted to do things. Okay. Yep. I. I. See, yep. I see it now. Okay. Um, well, now that your now that your group is done with this and have finished drawing in those points, you all stand stand there for a moment, and the wanderer says to you, "Well, I, I don't have much more to really show you tonight. Um, I do have one more thing to, to grant you before you leave. But uh, um, is there anything anybody wants to discuss while we're all here?" Yes, uh, this drawing of the gloom gems, does that, uh, immaculate these people for a time? Um, uh, in a way, how you what, say, yeah. shields them from being, uh, oh, on life oh. again? 
You, inoculate? you mean inoculate? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, it does actually. At drawing away that residual energy, um, it does a couple things to them. One, it actually does make it um, much more difficult for the spectral outsiders to reinfect them. It is possible, but it it's not something that can just be done immediately. Also, um, it kind of sort of wipes their memories. What How is long? this kind of sort of? Well, it, it actually erases all of the, the time they've been influenced by the, the spectral outsiders. Um, from, basically from the moment of, of uh, first contact. Now, the longer somebody's um, a follower of the outsiders, the longer their memory is erased and sometimes they have a hard time remembering their their past selves if it's been a super super long time that doesn't happen too often though so there is that but uh that that guy from last year the the um the one who who was worshiping uh uh chrysanthemum he's still in a coma at the hospital hmm that sounds unpleasant. Was chrysanthemum? I, chrysanthemum was a spectral outsider that uh, attacked the city a year ago. She was kidnapping people, and the Nighty Knights were able to defeat her. Um, I'm sorry, starts... the, the 90, 90 Knights? It, it, was, it, was, uh, it was not, not my choice. I thought okay. that you were the one who suggested it, David. No. Okay. I don't. Regardless, I don't remember that. Hey, can I make an insight check on that? I'm not joining a team called the Nighty Knights. Oh, I feel like no. We're called the Seekers. <laughs> Matt. Um. Yes, yeah. you can make an insight check. Hell yeah. Twenty-two. <laughs> above above board. I don't remember if that's true or not. <laughs> Above board, neither do I. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> so we're going to say, yeah, it was definitely David who first suggested 90 Nights. I don't know what you're talking, I know what talking about. And then, I do not believe you. Was it like one of those jokes that like come on and you're like, oh, crap baskets? I've decided I should say crap baskets now. <laughs> okay, so... So we're not the Nighty Knights. That's that's not oh, happening, right? No, no, that's so. No, what are definitely we? Definitely not. Because like Nova makes sense to me. Like that came, but like, who are we? What are we? Like, what? Do we, and is this just me now? Do I just like wear this all the time? Oh, oh no! Sorry, I was holding your, I was holding on to to your costume so you could kind of get used to it more. But I, but you can um, let that go now and. Um, you see the, the green eyes flash uh, from the cat, and your armors all begin to dissolve away, leaving you in your um, whatever clothes you were wearing before. Pajamas or street clothes or whatever. Okay. David's so, night and night. He's the only one in his pajamas. I'm not going to say it out <laughs> loud, Matt, but for the audience, Levi is immediately thinking that this is kind of troubling that if we were to ever do something that the Wanderer didn't like, he could just and your powers are gone. <laughs> it's an interesting thought. Wait, so I can put this on, but you can take it off? Oh, no, I can maintain it longer um, for, like, training purposes and stuff like that. Okay. It's, it's your choice so it's to, to transform or not. You can only transform in the presence of the invading evil, or well, you can actually force a transformation when there isn't, but that's really dangerous and and it, it, it can damage your your crystal. You don't want to do that in, unless an extreme emergency. Okay. But um, I can also uh, um, hold a, a little bit of energy out that allows you to transform if you ever want to like train. Or, or things like that. Um, I was just holding on to it, so because you, you all seem pretty excited about your your outfits. 
Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm. Think of me more as a, a kind of guide. I can offer advice. I can. I can grant you um, power, and I can work with the power that you gain to to build your, you up and, and things like that. I'm not like. I, I'm. I'm not. I'm not like. A, what, what would you, what would you call it? A Bosley. Um. I, I'm more like a, a Luna. You are the life coach? Yeah, the Sailor Moon sort of. canon in this universe. Oh, absolutely. It's it's 96. <laughs> it's been out for a couple cool. years. Cool. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right, Every, I can dig that, I think. Everything is canon. This is just straight up Earth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, we need... I need to cut back on your TV time. Weird cat. I mean, it, it's your collection, Dave. Does that make I you? Mean, does that make you the Usagi? I do not have Charlie's Angels in my collection. <laughs> Wait, does the Wanderer live with you? Uh, sort of. He kind of exists in a lot of places at once. I think. Um, it's kind of how how you all came here and met by following him, but all arrived at the same time. I think he kind of can go to any of us. I don't. I don't know. Yes, but you, you have mind? to clean up after him, like a real cat. He's smart enough. So, do we have to call the authorities now, or well, yeah, I'm, an ambulance, or it's something? Gonna be, gonna be hard to explain that, like we just transformed and fought a bunch of people and. I mean, we could just call yeah, say something um, happened and not you really speak here. You really shouldn't tell the police uh, or anybody like that. Like, they would only make your, your lives a lot more difficult. Yeah. Can we, we can't tell anyone about this? Well, no. I wouldn't. Why would you want to? Have you ever you read think a most, super You think comment? most people are able to handle... What's really going on in the world? I can't handle what's going on <laughs> in the world. <laughs> like, I, I imagine there's like, you know. Well, you uh, can. I mean, he, and he um, turns back and kind of with his paws uh, shows the, the scene here. You all, you all handled yourselves very well. So all of this has to be a secret from everyone. Not from each other, obviously. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, okay. these are the burdens of the of the Magingite. Adults they don't understand these sort of things. the The older you get, the more the mind goes dull. And the trust me, I've I've seen people try to to do it before, and it never ends well. I, instead, people are like you would be taken away and tested on and the government would want to try to control you and you wouldn't be able to do your 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 mission you wouldn't be able to fight the outsiders if you're locked up in a i mean well most jails wouldn't be able to to hold you either but the the government the black ops ugh, ugh, no i just I've, I've never lied to my parents before like i can't okay um all right. Well, it just seems like there's, there's, you know, uh, gotchas every time. I, every time I learn something new about this, it's a little scary. But um, okay, cool. The, the re real cool. world is kind of scary. The real world. I can't. You keep saying real world. <laughs> not... <sighs> okay. Okay. Okay, this is real now. This is it. So what's next? What what uh 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 and 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 Damien starts to kind of have a, a little bit of a of an anxiety attack, like a little like uh, like okay, like uh, this is real. Like I you know just burned myself and didn't burn, and I tried killing some people and they didn't die, and I think they're unconscious, and now like it puts so, like so this is what this is what we're doing now is we're we're fighting 
people and and I have to go to school tomorrow like it's a normal day of school tomorrow. Well, it, it, it's the weekend. You still got a couple days before school. Right. But yeah. Right. It's weekend. the weekend. I've lost complete track of time. Fantastic. Cool. It's not it's not helpful. I need to the, the cat kind of walks over and just rubs itself along your your legs in that that cat sort of way of just serpentine around, serpentine around. It's okay, dude. That, that's weirdly helping. It's weirdly helping. Okay. Uh, Matt, above board. How far off the road are we? Um, you're in the middle of the of the park, so quite a ways away. Okay, but we're not like we're still like in the city proper. Like this oh, is yeah. like a okay. Yeah, actually, I'll go ahead and show you on the map where you all are currently. Um, technically, you all are right over here. Oh, oh, okay. That's the real yeah. part right there. Oh, wow. So you're in the I'm... in the heart of the city itself. Oh, um, you're like, like, <laughs> yeah, like think, think... of uh, Central Park in. In, in New York, you know, it's just a big yeah. park in the middle of the city. Uh, I think I think we can safely leave these guys here. Like they'll they'll wake up, they'll have a bit of a headache, not really remember quite how they got here, but they'll go home, go to work, and be confused but normal. Well, I suppose you are the expert among us. Awesome. Okay, that makes me feel yeah. better. Feels weird, had a wild not. party with all those empty bottles. Yeah, that's uh, not a bad idea. Well, um, uh, let me. I got one more thing to, to give you all before you you head out. And he does that same cat jump thing again, and another object appears. This is much smaller. It, it kind of looks a little bit like a, a, a walkie-talkie if um, the plastic casing was colored in pastel. Um, he says to you, these are your communicators. Through them, you can contact each other um, anytime you want to. And the really cool thing about it is um, you are the only ones who can hear yourselves in it. Your average uh, people, they, they can't hear it at all. It's on a, a, a psychic wavelength that um, that connects you all, but you can turn it on and off, so you're, it's not like you're constantly connected with one another. Would they uh, see us simply talking to no one? Or... Um, I mean, they'd probably see you talking to something in your hand or that. I mean, it, it, you, you, you should be, you know, circumspect with with the thing but not a I long mean, date <laughs> it's like a long range version of the talk boy how far yeah, do these go um you know I'm not sure um they, they can work across the city that's for sure cool I don't know. Somebody drive up to Portland and see. Oh, yeah. You just came from there. He kind of shrugs a little bit. Well, you probably should all head off back to bed. You, you do have school in a, a couple days now, and it's getting really late. Um, good news is, um, and I, I know that one cultist escaped you all, and that, that's a, uh, it's kind of complicated, but Chances are, since they escaped, um, he's no doubt informing their cult of um, what happened. Chances are, um, they're, they'll probably be pretty quiet over the next few days. So keep your eye out for anything weird and, and, and that sort of thing. But you, you probably at least have a little bit of time to prepare before school starts. They shall be back and in greater numbers than before. And we'll be even stronger. Now, as you're leaving, um, just remember, be attentive to the world around you. Look for things that are out of the ordinary, strange occurrences that are out of place. You never know what may lead to one of the invading evils. 
So investigate the town around you and see what you can find. You still have to go to school, of course, but honestly, that's just another good resource that can help you in your search. That school of yours is pretty impressive. A lot more than the local high school, anyway. <laughs> Definitely not in character, but I'd totally like to just yell at the Wanderer, You're not my dad! <laughs> <laughs> Aisha what? is going to give everyone a quick hug before we part ways and say good job. Levi will tip the hat, but he will not <laughs> accept the hug. <laughs> so well, the floor you you're still wearing a cowboy hat? Yep. It's Isn't just a... white when I'm transformed and like brown when I'm not transformed. Yeah, okay, that's not a dead giveaway. Got it. <laughs> the, the only man in Laropa City with uh yeah. with with a cowboy hat. <laughs> yep. So Melody, I think, would just stand stiff as a board when you give her a hug because she wouldn't see it coming. Yeah, same. It's like I just met you. I'm. Thanks. I guess. All right. Cool. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get some sleep. And Damien's just gonna walk off in his own mind. Just, I can't believe. Yeah. This is all so so surreal. Well. Before before everybody leaves, I know this is a lot. So, what what do you want to know? I don't know everything, but I can I can answer the best I can. What happened where's, to those who came before us? Yeah, where's the rest of your team? Some of them stopped after we uh, beat Relia. Lahaya, and some of them died. This I'm is sorry. a this is a dangerous job, and it is your choice whether you want to keep doing it or not. They're unconscious. We beat them, and they're unconscious. Yes. We get beaten, and we die. Yes. Does not Our... seem like a failed trade, no? It is not. Well, the, 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 the powers of these gems and everything that they grant to us cannot be used to hurt actual mortal people, I think. Uh, but it can be used to sever... Uh, the cultists and the outsiders and their generals' connections to people, which is what we do. You were not attacking people. You were attacking the link, which is why we don't harm them. They don't have any wounds. They're just asleep. But when they hit us, the outsider's power doesn't have that sort of inhibition. Any, any damage we take is real. Okay. But the outsider we fought didn't just go unconscious, right? What happened to it? That monster they summoned. It, like, exploded into goo. Uh, that was... <laughs> uh, Matt, Kurt... Correct me in case I'm lying, please, mm -hmm. because I don't yeah. remember 100%. That wasn't a person. It sort of never was. Um, it's not it's not a person, absolutely. It definitely was though. You would know from experience that the spectral outsiders are beings from essentially another dimension. They're intruding into this world and corrupting people, but they are a real thing. Right. They, what, what I mean was like it's it, it wasn't ever a human. It was oh, always no. like the mon it was always the monster. Yes, it was an actual creature summoned into this room, into this world through the crack in the dimensions. Yeah. So again, our 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 powers can harm uh the the forces of the outsider and that monster there and there will be more wasn't a person. It 
came from the outsider's world or wherever wherever they're coming from. It's a it's a real enemy. So um if this is our uh, house can we not simply uh, close the door? That's Wait. I I think that's the goal. It must not be easy. We well, couldn't do it. Yet. Yet. Excellent. Now, Star Seeker, um, you said you 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 want a perception check. Yeah. For cracks. Why would you I was like, know, oh I would be why, looking why at Why would the, you know to look? I would be looking at the thing when he was holding it up. He was literally holding okay, it up. You, I feel I feel like it would be rather obvious when I when I okay. held it up. So if you're holding it up and, and you're like, uh, you want to look real close, that's fine. Go ahead and make a perception yeah. check. I was just like reacting to like what his physical that's acting. That's yeah. Fine. Probably don't see it. Oh, you have a Don't negative forget to, two perception. I, don't I forget to call out your rolls. Oh, uh, ten. Ten. Um, unfortunately, no. It's no. it's really dark. It's really really mm -hmm. dark, and so it's hard to t tell anything's up with his crystal. Cool. Um, in that case, uh, well, we're already living on borrowed time anyway, because we probably would have all died in that crash, and some of us are living on even more borrowed time. So, sure, every night we might be risking our lives, but at least we have the second chance to live, right? Yeah. Yeah, give some a dead man walking. Why not? If only we could have a uh, person to uh, occasionally talk to and uh, make our head smaller. Head smaller? Yes, the, the head... shrinking of the head. A psychiatrist or a psychologist, possibly, also known as a shrink. A head shrinker, yeah. Yeah, they call them head shrinks. Yeah, that's that's like a '60s term, isn't it, man? <laughs> you watch I learned a lot of English movies. from watching TV. What oh, do you want? Cowboy from me? movie specifically. Yeah, right. I feel like yeah. the '90s drink was still a very common yeah. term. Yeah. 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 How many bit. how many psychiatrists are in cowboy movies? Maybe I watched Mash. <laughs> Or Seinfeld. Okay. Or Talking about Corporal Klinger being nuts or not so nuts because he yeah. wears a dress to try and get out of the army. Yeah, I accept it. Now, eventually you all make your ways out of the park heading home. I know, um, Starseeker, you wanted to um, check in with Coffney before you all headed home. Uh, well, the question I wanted to ask got answered by the... Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Then, with that in mind, after leaving the park that night, each of you make your way back to your respective homes and the safety of your beds. Sleep comes swiftly enough for you all, giving you, um, in the terms of the game, an average sleep. Which means that you regain half of your hit points rounded down, plus your constitution modifier multiplied by your Maginite level. You're all level one right now. So half of your hit points rounded down, plus your constitution modifier. You also, um, so other than um, your hit points, um, you recover all of your magic points and you reduce your stress points by three, your exhaustion points by one, and those of you who are able to recover it, your so your crystal cr fractures, you can recover two of them. But none of y'all need to worry about that because you didn't. So wait, I get all my mana back? Yes, you got all your mana back. I try to remember where um where the mana is on the sheet. Yes, on, on, oh, on the right is. hand side. I found it. Right hand side under characteristics. Okay. 
and we had eight mana. That's right. Or I, I, I had eight. Um, and then, so my stress points and my exhaustion point are gone. They're not carrying over. Yeah, if you have if you have less than three, um, they're gone. Same thing for I... exhaustion. You lose Ooh. one exhaustion and three stress. Ooh. I was freaking out about that. Oh, don't worry. You can get those back easily enough. Oh, oh it builds up. Oh, I know. So, over the next couple days, you're able all to get used to the idea, or at least somewhat get used to the idea, of what you are now supposed to do, as well as the changes to your um, physical being. Aisha. You are able to spend a little bit of time alone with the Herald during those days. And he answered a, a couple questions you had about your situation. Hopefully those answers eased your mind a little bit. Um, during oh. this um, two period, two day period, does anything happen with my doctor? Do I get like any tests done? Um, Honestly, I feel like that's um, something you would you should be able to decide for yourself okay. whether or not you've been to the doctor quite yet, or if that happens later on. If that's okay. something you're you're wanting to do during at like as an actual event, um, message me and we'll talk about it. Sounds good. Are we role playing the weekend, or are we just no, fast forwarding? I'm I'm kind of fast forwarding through it. Okay. Okay. Yep. How else are we supposed to have a raucous party to celebrate the fact that we could die at any moment? <laughs> Maybe you did. Who knows? Um, those last few days before the start of school go by as a blur, unfortunately. Um, lots to do, not a lot of prep time to do it. And the, the city itself is rather quiet during those couple days. But... Before you know it, it is the evening before the first day of school. Fortunately, you've all got your student uniforms. Um, those of you who like to have it neat and tidy, have it pressed and all of that ready to go. And before you know it, you find yourselves waking up bright and early on the morning of the 26th of August, 1996. It's a great time to be alive. Clinton is still president of the, the United States, did a fantastic job during the Summer Olympics. A Game of Thrones was just released on hardcover. Robin Williams' Disney movie Jack is currently one of the most popular movies around. And even M2, MTV's second TV channel, was launched earlier this month. Oh my Life. god, MTV still plays music. Yes, yeah. MTV2 MTV is does. nothing but move, but music at that point. Yeah, I watch that channel so much. Me oh too. They still have music videos on MTV. I'm just but, playing more um, for Superbad. But, uh, you know, life tends to start early in most idyllic uh, Pacific Northwest cities, which means that you all have to hurry to get to school on time. Now, since we are starting off the day, I would like one person, I don't care whom, one person real quick, roll me a D100 to see what kind of day you're having. Okay. Sure. Oh. I will roll the weather. Nine. Nine. What's the weather? Um, you As you all wake up, you discover that the temperature is actually cooler than normal for um, late August. There is no participant precipitation um it's actually a cloud free day but the wind is extremely heavy you you all step outside and like, <laughs> the moment you you do the wind is pressing your coats against your back um those of you who wear skirts it, you have to push it down real quick it is just windy af but you all have the beginning of the day my question first off really would be do you all gather together before school? Do you meet um, on campus? Do you kind of just uh, ignore one another and and go about your 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 own thing? 
I'd probably walk to school with Melody because we usually walk home. So why not? Okay. Yep. How about the rest? Um, I think as a, a coping mechanism, uh, Damien just kind of throws himself in, uh, into, you know, what classes he's potentially going to be taking and, and whatever he can do to, to kind of be ahead of the curve uh, a bit. He's quite studious, quite nerdy, if you will. Um, like academic, if not, you know. Um, sure. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, you all arrive at Goldfrast Academy with enough time to meet up if you want to, or in, in um, Damien's case, more focus on, on studying, so, so trying to get to class, school as quickly as possible. Um, now, most of you uh, have been to this um, school for at least a year or more. Um, that we do have a new student in the group as well. Um, so, but you would, even you would, would be told that um, of what's going on. Now, the first day of school, um, once you arrive there, you're, you're greeted with pretty much what you'd expect to see on the first day of school. Friends reacquainting with one another, teachers attempting to herd students into the building, and at least one social breakdown in front of the entire assembly. <laughs> The academy itself is one of those tall, three-story structures in certain places, an imposing brownstone brick building reminiscent of those Ivy League colleges from the East Coast. It's a bit of a strange contrast for what is otherwise uh, uh, basically a large logging slash tech community. For some of you, today is a day of firsts, while others have been attending academy for however number of years. But regardless, you all have your class syllabuses breaking down what's going to happen today. And your syllabus says that the first block of your day is an assembly, which means there's no, no classes in the morning. Those of you who are former students of the Academy would know that Dean Voken usually addresses the, the school at the start of the year. And the man talks for way longer than he probably should. But since you're all well aware of the fact that the man was injured just a few nights ago, chances the chances of him being here today are rather, rather slim. How does he look? Well, I'm, he's not... The, that's what I'm saying. He's not the likelihood here. of him being oh, there is, is pretty slim. Regardless, um... You all make your way into the school, and you follow the crowd of students um, heading into the gymnasium, which is a tall side structure of the school not far from the main entrance of uh, Coltrass Academy. Um, you enter the, um, the gym to see that large, garish logo of the Coltrash Cheetahs emblazoned upon one side of the wall, across from an electric scoreboard. The bleachers are all pulled out, and and, and it's those kinds that like look like just things against the wall, but then as you pull them out, the bleachers get pulled and pulled and pulled and get right next to the edge of, uh, of the, um, the basketball court, and they're all hella uncomfortable. But um, those are all pulled out, and um, the seats are filling up fast. Do you all sit together in the assembly? Do you all um, do you kind of spread out, that sort of thing? Front, back, wherever. Um, yeah. Uh, Aisha, where do you um, sit? I feel like on, on her way in, she would like kind of try and see if she could see any of the others and be like, so do we want to sit together or not? Can I, can I jump in? Um, I feel like uh, Damien would, would look to his teammates, you know, and just if it's a school assembly, assembly, he's going to stick with the sports team. So he's just going to go 
with people he already knows and, and, and sit with his teammates. Yeah, absolutely. Um, most of the, the sports teams are all sitting in the front of the bleachers, and there's there's um, spots for, for everybody on the team. They usually reserve those specifically for, for the teams because the first part of these assemblies is usually like a team spirit kind of thing, get everybody pumped up. The, the cheerleaders who've been practicing all summer come out and do their first routine, that sort of thing sort of stuff so absolutely you go and, and sit at the front um david how Question. about you yeah what sports are are the sports here the sports mainly um in the winter are football and, and soccer um in the summertime uh or springtime i mean uh baseball is the main so basketball's not big here. Interesting. It's it's there, and um, they we, they do have a team, obviously, but it's not really like the sports. Gotcha. I was just used to it normally being basketball and football being the big two, with baseball being a third. But in Oregon, yeah. we've got like football and, and soccer in the fall uh, are mm -hmm. really big, and then basketball is a winter sport, and then um, uh, baseball is a spring sport. Yeah. Yeah. So they're the they're that, that's kind of what's going on throughout the year. Yeah. But, but like um, Coltrast itself definitely focus mo focuses more on the football and the soccer um, at the beginning of the year because that's like the really big draw of the, of the school. Soccer makes sense to me. I mean, you know, Soccer City USA and all that. When you're talking about Coltrast football, people got to ask which one. <laughs> Um, oh. they, let's, uh, getting back to, uh, sorry, um, I hear Katrina. I just said both footballs at both once. Footballs. Yes. Yes. On the same field at the same time. That, it, it's kind of weird, that, but, uh, they, they kind of juggle it a little bit and schedule the, the games on alternating weeks and it, it works out. Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> uh, David, where do you sit? David is as close to the exit door as possible. He's like right on the edge of the bleachers, three rows back, so that he's not like right visible in the front, uh, but still has a very quick exit because he does not want to be here. This is not what school's about. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Katrina, how about you? Um, Kat would sit with her friends and probably people in the dance club and stuff. Makes sense. Uh, Levi? Uh, Levi is new, so I guess probably he would sit with Melody, or if she doesn't want to sit with him, she would find, uh, Jonathan from the Marksman Club. <laughs> okay, Melody? So I have a quick question. Do you pronounce your name Aisha or Aisha? Aisha. 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 Okay, Aisha. good. I, I was saying it right yeah. then. Yeah. Um. So, did you ask, like, did yeah. you ask a particular person, or if she if she saw you, she asked, and you were if you were there last night, and she saw you, she asked. Okay, I'll just say that. Um. Yes, Melody did see her, and um. Also, Levi. So I guess the three of us will sit by each other, and Melody will just follow wherever you two go. But she would not sit super close. Like she, she kind of would leave a gap in between whoever's sitting next to her. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Well, as I said, um, these assemblies are just horrible and dreadfully dull, even at the best of times. First comes uh, Mrs. Wheeler, the school secretary, who steps forward to get everyone's attention and get them to all quiet down. Next, the athletics departments come out along with the cheer squad to start pumping up the students for the upcoming season. Um, but the participation is never really high outside of the students who actually participate in the sports. Like, um, it, it, the sports team is very, very good at the academy, but this is also a, very much so a place of, of learning. And, and so sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't even happen. But anyway, um, 
after um uh, uh, sorry uh coach uh coach appleman um comes out and he kind of he talks about nutrition and physical fitness be, uh, a little bit before cordelia jones who is the was the student council president from last year she comes up and and comes up to the mic and reminds everyone that clubs and after school activities um the signups are currently open and most of you should have already um signed up for your clubs for the year but um registration for the the winter um one or the fall clubs uh it will be open for about another week so if anyone has any last minute uh desire to join the camp lastly Lastly, um, once Cordelia steps away, you see Dr. Valerie Priestley, the vice principal of the school, um, come forward and take the microphone. And I have a handout for you all to see, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Real What was her last name? Uh, Priestley, P R I E S T L E Y. What was her first name? Was it Cordelia? Valerie. 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 Cordelia was the president yeah. person. Yeah, Cordelia Jones was the student uh, council president. Um, and Dr. Valerie Priestley is the assistant principal. Which I can go ahead and you know, show everyone. Right. As Dr. Like... Priestley, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, never mind. Go ahead. No, um, what were you saying about uh, Dr. Oh, Priestley? I was just saying she looks like a teacher. <laughs> yeah, um, she is uh, a rather severe looking woman. She with dark red hair and horn rimmed, horn -rimmed glasses um, that are always kind of just perched a little bit too low on her nose. Like she looks down over them whenever she's talking to students. Uh, it, it's a, a very condescending way. But... Um, she walks up to the center of the gym to begin her speech. It's about an, been an hour and a half or so, and um, the assembly just seems to be dragging on at this point. So just out of curiosity, who here is actually trying to pay attention to um, Dr. Priestley's speech? What is she speaking about? That's not the point. The point is, have you zoned out enough at this point that you're not paying attention? Or are you actually actively trying to pay attention? Well, I mean, the assembly's I've, been... Go ahead. I was this just going on say, for about an hour and a half. Okay, I was just going to say, like, at the beginning, she would probably say what she was going to talk about, and so we could decide whether or not it was important to listen to. But sure, I'll zone out. I think just... I've got one ear cocked while, you know, paying attention to what the team is doing. I want to hear and see if there's an update on the principal or something. Aisha, you're trying to say something? Yeah, uh, I would be listening to the people around instead, trying to eavesdrop a little. Um, well, there, see, I suppose there are probably some people talking in, in, in the assembly, so you could, if you'd yeah. like to. Yeah, just seeing what the hot gauze is. Absolutely. Um, David, how about you? Uh, David has earphones in, not listening into anything, just sort of for the noise reduction, and is uh getting getting caught up on whatever history is on this year's syllabus because that's his worst subject. <laughs> Does okay. not care about what this man is saying. Woman. Or woman, or whoever's woman. up there. Whoever is up there right now, he He's is not so aware of who it out, is. He can't even tell the gender of the person speaking. Yeah, he doesn't know yeah. if there's somebody still up there. Maybe it's three people doing a juggling act. Doesn't matter. Maybe it's a teacher just telling him, "David, we're done." 
<laughs> Mr. David, the assembly is over. No. Leave already. The the instant that anybody around him stands up, that's like his audio cue to just get out. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that's fair. Um, so for those of you who are actively trying to pay attention to the speech, I'm going to need from you um, just uh, wisdom checks to see if you can keep concentration and pay attention. Um, Aisha, you can go ahead and make a perception check because you're you're purposefully ignoring the assembly and you're trying to hear what other other people are talking about. I'm so good at perception checks. <laughs> I keep rolling them. <laughs> That's a thing. Uh, 13 wow, I rolled them. I got seven. I got a 15. I'm trying to listen. People are just too noisy. Um, yeah, unfortunately, Kat, like, it's your, your brain's still a little bit fried from this weekend, and you can't help but just kind of zone out and not really hear what the heck she's saying. Um, Aisha, it's way too loud, honestly. Like, there's a lot of people chattering, and most of what you're just hearing is white noise at this point. Damien and Melody, the two of you are able to maintain your concentration and pay attention to what the um, vice principal is saying. Now, I'm not going to do this big, long uh, uh, speech because uh, I'm just not, but um, it, the TLDR of her speech does have a few interesting points to it. She tells the student body that the dean was in a severe car accident the week before school, but he is alive and is currently recovering at La Ropa General. Students are reminded that the hospital is a place of healing, and are therefore discouraged from visiting the Dean there. Well-wishers can send cards or flowers instead, and anyone who wants to can um, contact Mrs. Wheeler in the front office to um, get more information about that. Dr. Priestley will be stepping into the Dean's role until he is well enough to return to his duties at Colterast Academy. She expects everyone to maintain discipline and order while he is away, so he is freed from worry and can focus on recovery. She says that she will accept, a, accept nothing less than the excellence from Coltrass students that they all know you are, poss you are possible of. She says that she will expect nothing less while she is in charge. Now, the one thing, once the speech is ended and everyone kind of gives that, you know, half-hearted clap as the, um, the Mrs. Wheeler comes back up to dismiss everyone for lunch or to wherever they need to be for their second block period. The one thing that stands out to you, Melody and, and Damien. She makes no mention of any other students in the accident. All she said during the speech was that he was returning to Laropa City from Portland, where he had received a prestigious award. That was it. Yeah, I was actually going to say that Melody would be kind of panicking, thinking, oh, did they know we were in that car too? And why hasn't anybody asked us about it? Hmm. But I guess they don't. Yeah. It is kind um, of strange, and, and you, your, your mind kind of lingers on that as you're all getting up off the bleachers and making your way down. Um, your group, being seniors, are first at lunch, so your group is heading straight to there from from the assembly. Uh, yes, Damien. Uh, sorry, two quick clarifications. Uh, Mrs. Wheeler, who was that again? Mrs. Wheeler is the head secretary at, at the school. She, she worked at the front office. Okay, and... Um... Sorry. I think I'll save the rest. We're good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, since we, you are all out of assembly and are being released to lunch, 
I think this is an excellent place to pause and take a break. Can we, uh, before we yeah. take a break, uh -huh. would it be possible for me to approach Ms. Priestley as we're uh, exiting the assembly, or should we wait for that after the break? Because I'd like to walk up to her and, and talk to her. She was um, trying to get out of there fairly quickly. You could try to approach her um, if you really wanted to, but there are a lot of students between you and and her, so you have two options. You can try to weave your way through and, and get to her. You can wait till everyone's going off to lunch, and you can try to approach her at, at her office at lunch if you wanted to. Um, it, it's kind of up to you. Do you want to, like, work your way through and get to her right this second, or would you rather um, wait a little bit to the, you know, like the the um, crowds part? I'll, I'll wait until later and, and speak to her in private. Okay. Well, then, like I said, uh, let's go ahead and pause and we will go take our break. And we'll be back in about 10 minutes, folks. When we return, we have lunch and uh, Damien wants to try to speak to the principal. So stay tuned. Howdy, everybody. We are back. And when we last left off, most of the squad was heading to the lunchroom. But Damien, uh, you are looking for an opportunity to to get get away and catch uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Priestley before she gets back to her office. So I'm in, I'm in sitting here thinking to myself, what what do I want? What's your uh, what, what's your your, your yeah. goal here? Because like I'm, I'm... so so just to give you a little bit of information, the um, the office is uh, here in the center of the school, uh, not far from the library, right over here. Um, sure. There's just a front office area, and then both principals have their little side offices there. So you can see her making her way down the hall in that direction. Um, are you going to catch her out in the school or in the hallway? Or are you trying to catch her in her yeah. office? Yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be nonchalant about it. So here's my motivation. Here's my motivation. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we woke up in our beds, right? We had this like out of body experience, time froze, and then we woke up in our beds well, at home. No, right? no, 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 no. You were in a van. You were driving along. You had your experience, your, your the, everything that happened there then the 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 van righted itself people came and helped you you were checked out by the emts you're eventually sent home okay got it so that it's not like we blacked out and then woke up later it's no there were emts and everything or okay yeah no you um, all remember actually going home your parents like being concerned about uh -huh. you checking you out you woke up you went uh -huh. to bed you woke up the next day and that's when you realize you're all healed and whatever. Uh huh. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, so, okay, that changes my motivation a bit. I still do want to talk to her though. Uh, my goal is basically to find out, you know, why she didn't go into more detail about like the award and like the trip and 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 what, um, like like why we weren't mentioned, essentially, you know. Okay. So um, you can see her as she's uh, getting ready to turn in to the, the main office itself. If you hurry, you can grab her. Yeah, I'm going to say, uh, Ms. Priestley, I, I mean, you know, I'm going to call out her her last name like that. Ms. Priestley, if you have a moment. Oh, you done she, screwed up. She's definitely one of those. Oh, that go, she, doctor. Yeah. doctor. Shit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Cool. That's exactly what happens. You read my mind. <laughs> she turns around and looks at you and like that highly manicured or sculpted eyebrow just raises up and she looks at you and you're a tall dude she has to kind of look up a little bit to uh. you but you feel like you're three feet tall as that eyebrow raises and she says excuse me mr diaz but the correct honorific is dr Priestley." of course my apologies uh i you'll you'll forgive me after the events from a couple of days ago, I haven't really been myself. I'm also kind of curious why the details were kind of left out of, you know, we were on that trip. 
You you say that like she she has a very confused look on her face and she's like on trip? I what are what are you talking about, Mr. Diaz? I, I Coach Appleman mentioned that you rolled your, your ankle and twisted it last week in practice, but why would anyone why would I mention that in an assembly? I what was trip sitting are you talking? I was sitting behind the dean when the accident happened. I was there. I was in the accident. What? Me and, and and five other students were with the dean. We were part of a group that was selected. What None are of you this talking about. The dean was and, and like you can see like the confusion on her face growing at first, but then a dark kind of look goes over her face and she says Mr. Diaz, I don't know what you're trying to um, insinuate here, but there was nothing improper going on at with the dean, on, and his accident was the result of horrible weather that evening. Claiming that you were with him is not only horribly inappropriate, but... If you continue along, the, if I hear any sort of rumors or gossip going about around the school, you and I are going to be having a very difficult and different conversation, young man. Um, are we clear note, on this? Yes. Quick metagame question. Uh, we received letters, right? Like we were given... Or, or was the invitation informal? Because um, the invitation was uh, a lot more informal. Um, your parents were were called and uh, contacted by the school. Um, the whole thing was kind of discussed over the phone, and they they gave their consent uh, via that way. Got it. But it, but we did, I, there was no like letter or you know here is the event, the invite, what have you. No, n nothing like that. Got it. No. Okay. Yeah. Then at this point, uh, Damien's just gonna be like, uh, my apologies. I, I don't mean to uh, ruffle any feathers. I, I, I did not mean to disturb you. I I must be misremembering events. Uh, forgive me. I should she, probably get to lunch. I think you should, Mr. Diaz. And and quickly, the lunch is sloppy joes today, and those tend to go quick. She's just yeah. kind of scowling at you a little bit as she walks away. Um, go ahead and give me a perception check as um, you're turning around and, and heading back away. Um, I'd also like to glance in my bag at my soul crystal, if possible, mm -hmm. and okay. see if it's glowing at all. It is not. Okay. Uh, you said a, a perception check? Correct. That's going to be an 18. Okay. As you're making your way around that corner, you hear the prince or the, the vice principal's very sheer voice um, saying from behind the closed door to Mrs. Wheeler, you would not believe what one of the students just came up and talked and said to me. The strangest sort of slander I've ever heard. And then the door closes behind her. He called me Mrs. Uh, cool. And then with that, I'm going to uh, go essentially find everyone else that was in the van and just to tell them what, it, what just happened. Okay. Well, I imagine all of you all are by this time gotten through the lunch line or if you brought your lunch, you, you have that. Um... Do you all sit to get gather up and sit together? I imagine you probably would at this point because, like, no matter what, there's things to talk about, and you do have a job to do. Sure. Now, the yeah. way lunch works in Magic Nights is, is kind of interesting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a handout here. So, Magic Nights may use the 30 minute lunch time to interact with one another or fellow students. This includes exchanging information, listening to local gossip. Um, having friendly interactions, that sort of thing. Um, from the mechanic's standpoint, everyone has to 
choose one lunchtime activity to do um, during the lunch break. Um, you can relax and eat with friends and just kind of chill with, with um, some friends and, and uh, hang out with them. Um, doing so, you get to remove one stress point and gain one social point with one NPC or Magenite. If you have no stress points, you gain an additional social point. You can also uh, do a last-minute cram session, which um, reduces the student burden um, during one of your classes by four. You can listen to gossip, which is pretty much the primary um, thing um, to search for information while you're at school, at least during the school day. During your lunch hour, you can kind of spend some time talking to anyone or just doing a general searches to see what you can um, come up with. Your other activities include drinking a copious amounts of caffeine um, to get rid of um, your stress and exhaustion points for at least the school phase. Um, or you can take a power nap and try to get rid of some stress, but none of you really need to do that sort of thing. Um, Damien, um, you are find your friends or your teammates all gathered together at one table in the middle of the lunch area. Um, so you can impart the information you got before you all do this if you wish. So go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm going to, especially if, if people are sitting away from each other, I'm going to grab whoever is alone and say, hey, we, we need to talk like together uh, either before or after lunch. But we, we need to talk together. So I'll leave it up to everyone else if we talk about it now or after. What do you all think about that? I can talk. Yeah, I feel like sit together. We coordinate. Yeah. All right. Yeah, cool. We so, yeah, we sit together, and then I'd say, like, I um, did, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I thought it was very odd that we weren't mentioned at all we as part of the the group. You know, the the thing that the principal, the award, like. You know, it wasn't an award. We were supposed to go show off our school and like talk about it, right? Like, like he did. He did receive an award. Oh, that was, it was part, an of, award. part of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. he received the the um, educator of the year award, and you were there representing the school and showing off about it during that award ceremony, during the yeah, whole Ms. dinner and everything. Ms. Priestley completely left us. Like, it didn't mention the fact that we were in the accident and you know that he was the only one injured and and so i i went to talk to her about it and ask her why and as far as she's concerned we weren't on that trip like we were never in the van like i said i sat behind him and and, and she almost lost it at me like she almost said that like i was gonna you know face some consequences if i keep pushing this and so like, like i'm not crazy right we were in that van yeah we were there um Perhaps the Wanderer pulled some strings to make people forget to keep our nominity to make our jobs easier. I all mean, the, all he the, is the cat playing with slings seems like something he would enjoy. <laughs> David, is this something the Wanderer would do? Okay, above board? Holy shit. Cat? Playing with the strings of fate <laughs> is a really good concept. Like for like like for a game. Ooh, I like that. That's I'm gonna write that's, that that's really powerful. I got You're welcome. I, I want to say that right out. Um. Yeah, I I don't know what it is. Um, maybe maybe when 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 you make new magi knights, there's there's a lot of power that goes into that. But yeah, um. As far as the rest of the world knows, we weren't there because we would have died, but we didn't. And so we weren't. But like the EMTs, like are their memories wiped too? Are our parents' memories wiped? Like who knows? Like like that night happened. I remembered getting taken care of. I remember coming home. Like That's a lot of minds. Yeah, but nobody else will. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll drop it. I mean, if you like, 
I don't I don't think this is terribly important, but if you want to dig into it, we were treated by EMTs. There would be records of us because they have to like record everything that they do when they go out to a site. I guess here's what I'm saying is you know she does not remember uh, us being on that trip and the only people i've met with amnesia are the or, or pe- the only people that i understand have amnesia are the people that we beat the cultists right not necessarily but, so it like it you know we'll talk to the wanderer if the wanderer did this i'm happy dropping it but like Are you saying you think she's a cultist? I mean, you should have seen how angry she got. It's Mm. possible. She seems like she's just that way on her own, but I don't know her that well, so I could be wrong. (laughs) She She is just kind of like that. Uh, she's very she's very strict um but i mean if she was a cultist isn't that a good thing it means that we freed her and she can't be possessed again at least for a pretty decent amount of time well that's a good point yeah okay how how do we find the wanderer to ask him questions Oh, you just kind of you just kind of say, uh, "Hey, wanderer, come here a second. <laughs> yeah, David, what can I do for you?" And you see he's coming out from underneath the table, jumping onto one of the the seats. Is the wanderer sitting there? He he looks just like a cat. There there's no wings or anything like that, but those cat eyes color. definitely do glow that faint green color. I want to feed yeah. him a piece of sloppy Joe meat. Um. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. That doesn't really look all that great. Neither, does, neither does cat food. It actually looks probably very similar to wet cat food. <laughs> no, it, it, it definitely does. And, ugh, ugh. What do you eat then? Souls. Oh, you, you know, souls of the innocent, uh, bugs. Uh, no, no, nothing like that. It, uh, Only I, I, innocent bug souls. <laughs> No, no, I, I don't like. I, I don't know. I enjoy a cheeseburger every so often. Those are pretty good. And ice cream? Have you ever tried ice cream? Holy crap! That stuff is just out of this world. Like I'm looking around to see if anybody can like watch us talking to. The, can see us talking to this cat in the middle of the lunchroom. Make a perception check. Uh, 19. It's about time you, to start rolling better. You, st- you glance around and start looking at, and all of the students seem to be focused on whatever it is they're doing. You know, there's people gossiping amongst themselves. There's couples eating together. There's people, you know, get, getting in bickering matches and that sort of thing. But nobody seems to notice that this little cat is sitting in, in the chair next to you all. If, if a cat is caught in school, is that a bad thing? Oh yeah, definitely. They, they they probably chase me away with uh, with a broom or something. Don't don't call 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 too much attention to me. Okay, so quick question. I just spoke with the vice principal about. I guess I'll call it the event, the the accident, and she doesn't seem to remember that we were on the trip. Did you do something to like affect people's memories? Oh yeah, um, I did actually. The the okay. the like I said, adults they don't understand uh, what what's going on in the world. There'd be way too many questions if you went to um what went went to the hospital one day and was fully fine and walking around the next. So uh, you know, part of my job is protecting your anonymity. Uh, point of order. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we had a little bit of a discussion about this the other night, but before you saved us, I had a terminal illness. 
And there's a long history of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all still there. I, I'm, I'm not like, I'm not going to spend that much time. I just kind of, and, and honestly, like uh, the, the whole erasing of the mind thing is a lot more of a, a recent memory type of thing. Like there's limits. Okay. 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 So I shouldn't freak out about the fact that like nobody remembers us going on this trip. I, I, I don't really see why, no. Okay. I mean, if okay. if if the entire student body knew that you were you were on there with the, the principal, there'd be a lot of focus upon you all. There'd be a lot of questions, and that sort of thing just gets in the in the way of what you're supposed to be. Best telling us with questions. Why are we yes. all okay and he's not? Oh, the principal? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, there, there'd be a lot of questions about why you're walking around just fine a couple days afterwards, and, and he's still in the hospital. Okay, so, quick quick clarification. I should. you have a terminal illness? Uh, had. Had? Had what? Uh, I knew you were at the hospital. I don't want to go into it too much, but yeah, I had a strand of cancer. I was in the hospital for a year. Um, I decided I was going to live my last months, days, who knew how long, just trying to embrace this life. And then when we all had the incident, it went away. Um, whoa. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that's why I've been a bit more willing to accept all this. Yeah, no doubt. Well, there's a there's a lot of advantages to the power you all now have. There's limitations too, and some of it is keeping that uh, the the secrets that you all uncover. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some adults that, that understand these sort of things. There, there, there's occultists who study, and there, there's some people who are just naturally susceptible to, to it. But for the most part, your job is keeping the rest of the world ignorant from what's happening. Sounds Check good. the world and no one knows. Yeah. It could be... It, could, it can be pretty lonely, especially when you're by yourself. David knows all about that. But you all have each other now. And that's definitely a good thing. Yeah, how long? Hopefully okay. in, until the invading evil is no longer invading or evil. <laughs> is evil ever not evil? For how long? That makes it sound well, so me. ominous. The evading could. The evading could Ominous stop. Is my middle oh. name. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. All right. Well. Oh, it's not Mildred. Thanks. I thought it was Mildred. Uh, Don't make me laugh when I'm drinking. Uh, I have a question. <laughs> uh, you said that adults are uh, how stupid, blind to this sort of thing. What happens yeah. to us when we uh, finish the uh, school? Well, I mean, I, I think you all think uh, in terms of like adulthood in the your your limited uh, mortal context, but um, in, in in the natural order of the universe, uh, adulthood come, comes quite a bit later. Your species, uh, for example, you, you tend to reach bodily maturity around 25 or so. Now, I, I, your American laws, I'm pretty sure they were written by pedophiles at one point, but that's another, that's a completely other topic of conversation. So um, let, let's just, uh, let, let's just go ahead and, and, and assume that you, you have quite a bit longer than than you might think. You're, you're, you're all 17, 18 years old. You're, you're, 
you're right at the a, a very good age to not only accept and understand these things, but be powerful enough to stand against it. Uh, certainly. Uh, when we, uh, well, I should say, if we uh, finish this uh, work, we we uh, forget. Oh, oh, no, no, not necessarily. Um, I mean, it could if you asked me to. I suppose it's not a pre like we won't have to. It would be a choice. Oh yeah, if if the war ended tomorrow and we're all able to to walk away, we we would all go and ha have some. Uh, catnip uh, cocktails and uh, hang out on the beach. He just gives because, a big wide oh. chest fire grin. Are you just gonna eat one of her sushi and just like bl slow blank? <laughs> I mean that that answers my concern. Uh, I, I feel better. I feel good. Okay. Cool. Good. Thank you. Um, I'm always happy to, to help out. Uh, just, if you ever need a, a, any any uh, any questions answered, or you know, just uh, some concerns concerns uh, set aside, uh, just uh, call my name. I'm usually about. And the cat kind of jumps off the chair and goes underneath the table. You all look real quick. He's gone. Magic. Definitely yeah, magic. I, I mean, he can appear in many places at once and just vanish and appear. It's going to take me some time to get used to that, for sure. Never know when he might be watching. Okay, that's just creepy. That's very creepy. Talking about pedophiles <laughs> writing laws. <laughs> I mean, historically speaking, probably the founding fathers were probably not that great. Oh, I'm not, I'm not arguing. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> arguing this point. No, 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 no nobody's <laughs> saying that. I'm just, you can always be watching. That's that's a bad sign. <laughs> cool. All but right, uh, so what's next? I like Santa. Oh. Lunchtime. But um, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and move on into lunchtime. You, you got a little bit of time left. You have been talking to the, the Wanderer for um, at least half of your lunch already, but you still have some time to, to do a few things. Mm -hmm. Um, Pink Sheet Geek is redeeming a hydration check, so everybody hydrate! I feel kind of silly that my horn cup is only filled with water these days, but oh well. I mean, I anyway. Know that. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's straight up water. Sometimes it's fizzy water. Anywho, um, so yeah, lunch period. Um, you all need to real quick make a decision. Do you want to relax and eat with friends? Do a last minute cram session? Listen to gossip? Drink copious amounts of caffeine? Or time take a power nap? Let's go around the table with to um, you know what? Let's let's do opposites. I, I've, I usually do. So Melody, what do you want to do? Um. Melody would like to listen to gossip, but she doesn't do it by talking to people. She just like goes and stands in dark corners of the lunchroom trying to listen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I like it. Um, so normally I would have you roll a investigation check, but for this, I'm going to have you roll a stealth check. Okay. Um, okay. Um, we're going to do that here. One second. Um, Levi, what are you wanting to do? Uh, I will probably go over and talk to Mr. Windsor, if you please, and uh, hang out with him. Mr. Windsor? Jonathan Windsor of the uh, Marksmanship Club. Ah, your friend from the Marksmanship Club. Okay, so... Eat with friends. He Relax is not as hawkish about it, but he is very much one of those people who cares about, like, people addressing him properly. Okay. I like it. Um, Kat, how about you? Um, Kat's going to listen to gossip, wander around, talk to people. 
Okay. Um, Hannah. Uh, I think Aisha is also going to listen to gossip, but very, you know, very like go interject into like a conversation and then just kind of like join the conversation, just kind of flow with it and see what's, what's up. Okay. I dig it. Damien. Yeah, similarly. Um, I think, you know, it's the first day of school. He's not too worried about his classes. He's going to, uh, you know, catch up with the team, you know, flex his social muscles a little bit and, uh, and, and just hear what he can listen to gossip. Okay. So listening to gossip as well. Uh, David, I think I might know the answer, but I want to know anyway. <clears throat> oh, what do you think the answer is? No, you just go ahead and tell me. And, and no, I'll what do you think? Right. What do you, what do you, what do you think the answer is? Matt? All right. Well, come on. Well, remembering from last campaign, um, my guess would have been the, the thing you, you always tend to do during lunch, which was uh, uh, do a last minute cram session. <laughs> you know what? I was going to relax and eat with friends, but since everybody <laughs> kind of like went and did other things. <laughs> Uh, you I are mean, correct. You I'm going to me and uh, you know the marksmanship <laughs> club. Sit with somebody and listen to gossip. Uh, no, so I am going to cram session for physical education. I don't know how that works, <laughs> but maybe uh, it's well, the we... health portion of the class that you're cramming for. We, we talked about that a little bit the last time. Um, your cramming for PE was like running in place and doing squats and getting yourself hyped up, maybe eating a power bar or something like that. That draws that draws way too much attention in the middle of a lunchroom, dude. <laughs> <laughs> then you tell me how you cram for for phys ed. Steroids. Uh, <laughs> Just get into the uniform now. Just be dressed in good old homework helpers. David, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to do this in real life. Um, <laughs> just like warm up, do some yoga, you know. Yeah. Jake, you know, like go to the gym and warm <laughs> up. Go, go to next. Yeah, go <laughs> to six period. Go to uh, six. Period. No, I think he's got some like athletic journal and he's reading about um like the way that muscles connect and the way to uh relax and tense in the proper way to like get uh better results with like uh anaerobic exercise okay i like it so um for your part as your um sitting there studying up and trying to figure out the best ways to be a bit more athletic, um, you do get to add a four to whatever role you make during that class. Makes it a little easier than trying to reduce the DC. You just add four. Yeah. Um, Levi, you go and sit down with your pal from the Marksmanship Club. And you, you actually spend the, the last remaining part of your lunch period having a very chill, just a general conversation you talk about your favorite uh guns and and things like that you plan out your activities for uh sunday's club meeting and and all that stuff so since you have no uh stress points you get to add two social points with your pal oh he is up to 12 now nice Eight. for the rest of you um wanting to listen to gossip um, if you're actively like interjecting yourself into another uh, conversation or things like that, you're going to make an investigation check. If you're trying to like just listen in on other conversations, you get to roll a perception check. Um, for Melody, who's standing in the shadows, lurking and, and listening in, um, you get to make a stealth check. And I see you already rolled, so why don't we start with you as far as your, your rolls go. What was your stealth? I got a four, and I think that would be because, like always, she's chewing her bubble gum. So maybe <laughs> like right when she got right next to somebody, her bubble got too big and it popped. So 
She didn't stealth very well. <laughs> yeah, and the moment you do, like the people who are conversating at the moment, just jump and, and look at you. Oh, oh, what, what are you? What are you doing here? Were you just leering at us? Oh. Ah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, don't mind me. And then she just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that is a failure for you, uh, Melody. Um, we're going to go next to um, Aisha. Um, yeah, you I got all, 11. Yeah, you got an 11. Um, you, you walk over to a, a conversation and um, you've got uh, a couple kids who are discussing uh, Mr. Vulcan's car accident and the rumors surrounding it. Y you overhear a little bit about it. Um, the boys uh, obviously are completely under aware, unaware that any of you were present in the in the crash. But they seem to be discussing rumors that the Dean was either drunk, ill, or it was actually an elaborate assassination attempt by Dr. Priestley to get his position. <laughs> um, you you kind of interject a little bit and, and try to work your way in on this conversation. Um, but uh, they, they, um, they're like, oh, oh, uh, you're that. You're you're that former idol. Wow, um, that that's uh, that's really cool. Um, do, do you want to sit down and join us? Uh, yeah, I guess we could talk about that. That is fine. <laughs> and um, un unfortunately, with with that eleven, they seem to tr try to be um, talking to you more about. Um, your stardom and, and and things like that. Some of them start asking questions about body glitter and and stuff. And the conversation for the remainder of lunch period kind of just is not very um, satisfying to you. But as you're you're getting ready to to get up, feeling kind of dejected and like, ugh, I, I, I don't want to deal with this at all. You do notice that one of the boys that you're talking to he has a, a milk carton from the, from the school. And on the side of the milk carton, um, you can clearly see a, a picture of a clean-cut boy in a collared shirt and tie. Underneath the, the picture, it says, Jeremy Tanner, 16, missing. And then there's an, uh, one of those hotline numbers that you can call to report um, sightings or uh, rumors or that sort of thing. I'm going to um, go buy a milk at the thing. <laughs> Katrina. You were rolling. Uh, you rolled a 17, it looks like. And um, you're kind of moving about looking for really anything that, that's kind of standing out and is weird. You spot something fairly quickly. Um, as you're walking around the school, you, you look out one of the windows and you notice that there is um, a student sitting alone underneath a tree um, outside. Um, there's windows, uh, you know, on the outer building um, looking out and into the common area, and you can see the the student sitting there. Um, he has a book on his lap. He seems to be reading it, um, really kind of pointedly ignoring anybody else, which is very interesting because beyond that, there is a rather large commotion um, near the fence. You can see a, a group of, of uh, boys all over at the fence at the far end of the um, the common area. And they seem to be like, you know, cheering and, and cheering and there's a lot of movement and that sort of thing. I wonder what's going on. Uh, at the kid under the tree or just in general? No, um, they're, it's, they're actually beyond the kid in, in the tree. The kid's just kind of sitting there. Um, paint, patiently ignoring this, and beyond them at the at the fence itself, there's a big crowd of um, of boys there, 
And now that, like, Damien, you actually could can see this as well. And you can recognize them. A lot of them are members of the soccer team. Yeah. And I mean, for lunch, ahead. I would say, for lunch, I would say I'm looking for the soccer team to kind of like, you know, buddy, buddy, but also listen and, and like find out what I, you know, what's going on, who's going to what parties, who, what, what's happening with the student body or like, who do we care about? Who do we not care about? Et cetera. Um, and so if there's a bunch of them outside, then yeah, that's where I'm going to be. Okay. So you do see Damien um, notice that as well and start heading outside of the, the lunchroom and into the open air to, to see what's going on with the soccer team. Do you uh, approach that as well? Or there is other things going on in the lunchroom if you're more interested in like just listening to gossip and that sort of thing? Um, well, if Damien's going to check out the soccer team, she will leave him check out the top soccer team and... Uh see what else is going on okay um besides the the kid that's kind of sitting there underneath a tree ignoring everything itself you you also notice that there is a copy of the school newspaper um first edition just came out um lying on a table near you you also hear uh, can see that there is another group of boys just sitting at a table who seem to also be gossiping about the principal, if you want to listen to more on that. So you can either, um, there, there's the, the kids sitting under the tree, there's the school newspaper, and there is um, the kids who are gossiping more about the principal, or the, the dean. So many choices. <laughs> you rolled high. Um, I don't know what the important thing is here. Um. Not going to worry about about the principal. Do I want to look at the school newspaper or go talk to that random kid? Mm. Uh, she, Can you grab I don't know if there's another chance to check out the school newspaper. Hmm? Can you pick up the newspaper while you go talk to the kid? That's what I wonder, because I want to pick up that newspaper, but I don't know if I have have to only do one or pick up a copy of the newspaper at some point are we able to get a newspaper to check it out oh, at some point i i don't see why not they're they're free and in, in in, put about the school so okay if i can i'll grab a newspaper to read it later and go check out the kid that's sitting out there okay if he's okay <laughs> so um damien you're the first person out the doors and are, are hurrying over to those those group of boys that you can clearly see are members of the soccer team. You see them crowding around the, the fence and they're all looking out on the up to the opposite side of the fence. And as you get closer, you can spot that there is another group of boys on the opposite side of the fence. And you can hear a lot of insults being thrown back and forth. Um, uh, a, a lot of really aggressive kind of commotion coming from them. So you, you start to hurry, rushing your way over. And you can clearly see that the boys on the opposite side of school are from Laropa High, the local um, public high school. They're wearing, you know, the letter jackets and, and that sort of thing. Um, and they're basically sitting there talking shit to um, the soccer players they're like ah you all suck we're gonna kick your ass this up at, at the end of the month when we have our match you guys are terrible players we've been watching you you all uh practice over the summer and you can't even do a i, I don't know anything about soccer so we're gonna just say that one thing that they do and um you all suck and you can tell like Things are kind of getting a little bit of aggressive. Like uh, your your fellow uh, players are are yelling back at um at least a couple people are like hitting the fence in an aggressive manner. What do um, you do? I um, geez, not knowing kind of my status with the team, it's hard to know. Uh, 
I w assuming I have some influence with the team, I'd like to try to calm them down and, and basically say, hey, knock it off, get inside now, right? Like, like Mrs. Priestley's in charge. Like, she, you do not want to be caught out here doing this. Get inside, go. Like, like start getting, like ignoring the other team. I'm just going to try to push my team back inside, you know? And, and yeah. try to get, try to change the the, the atmosphere and, and, and encourage people like, break it off, knock it off. This is not who we are. Like we just got out of the assembly. We will get reamed. Okay, I like it. You're trying to um, convince them, trying to to get them to 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 leave this all alone. So yeah. honestly, I th I think this is going to be an influence check. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna run up uh, and and just start yelling like, "Hey, knock it off! Get inside!" Like, yeah, like like try to intimidate and, and, and say like, you know, get inside or, or or bad things are gonna happen to us. Like, we don't want to be caught out here. Uh, influence, come on, where'd you go? There you are. Ooh, that's a twelve. That is a twelve. You come running over there and you're like, hey guys, come on. You don't need to be do doing this stuff. They got nothing. They're they're just here causing shit um, and, and trying to stir things up. And like- I do want to say Mrs. Priestley's name a lot, right? Like she said, like, yeah. we cannot afford to have any players on the bench. You know, we are better than this. Get inside, you know, don't let Miss Priestley catch you out here. Yeah. Um, so. As you're doing that, like um, your words are kind of cutting through your your team members, and uh, at first they're like, "But these guys, are, these guys just showed up out of the blue and and just started taunting all of us and and, and making a making a mess." Matter. And um, as you're doing that, um. <laughs> your your teammates, like I said, they seem to be listening to you. They're like, "Yeah, you're, you you know, you're right." Uh, Dr. Priestley isn't going to be is going to just come down hard on us. We don't want to be kicked off the soccer team, um, and and so they all seem to be starting to to move away. But then you hear a, a taunt from the boys from La Ropa High. They're like, oh, "Of course, these Coltrass kids—they're just a bunch of cowards, little panty waste. They 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 can't stand up to anything. We we got this. We're going to kick their asses. They're just running away like the cowards they are. I'm just going to take a second, breathe. You know, I I I I I I I have to, you know, we have to be better than this. I I, I cannot afford to get in trouble. And so uh gritting my teeth, you know, despite the insults uh, I'm going to keep just trying to shepherd everyone back in and say, this does not matter. This is not who we are, right? We hold ourselves to a higher standard than them. Okay. I want you to make for me one more influence check. This is a little bit higher this time, but you're not doing too bad so far. Oh my God. I'm 13. <laughs> Could I use my coin for loss? It's my middle of the rule. What? Could I use my coin for loss? Um... I will allow you to, yes. If you want to give your coin to allow someone else to make a re-roll, you have the ability to do that. Yes, I'm gonna do. Oh God, please let this be good. 21. That is a 21. You feel fate um, kind of twisting for you in, the mo in that moment. And um, your words seem to make it through to your your fellow players like yeah you're right you, you're right damien you, you know what you're talking about you, you're um we're not we're not gonna rise to their level we're gonna just ignore it and they all seem to be making their way in and as they're they're walking away as, um you kind of look back and you can see the laropan uh the laropa high students um they're, they're still kind of cat calling and, and talking shit a little bit and and uh but you definitely can see the disappointment in in their eyes like make for me one last roll and it's going to be an insight check if possible i'd like also to see like turn around while i'm walking away and and you know take a look at who from laropa is over there um so that i can uh commit them to memory you know like who who's who's here okay 
Yeah, that's an 11. Other than the fact that they're really, really aggro and kind of douchey right now, you, it, it, nothing else seems to be out of the ordinary. Like uh, the, your, the high schools have always had a rivalry amongst themselves. Like um, Laropa High gets beaten almost every single time uh, Cole Trask goes up against them. And so that rivalry is very, very much there. And you're like, yeah, that's probably all this is. Right. But cool. you can at least um, clock their their faces and their names. These are all students that, as, as a soccer player, um, you've played against them before and can at yeah. least recognize them um, at a glance. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I'm going to say one last, just as a last thing, is like, you know, uh, this is bad form coming to our house. You know, leave it on the field. And uh, we'll see you there. <laughs> Yeah, we will see you there. We're going to be wiping the floor with you. They all yell as um, you make your way. Um, cool. Katrina, as you're walking out and, and you spotted that, this is all going on about the same time. So as uh, Damien was walking over to deal with that, you up approach the boy sitting behind at, at, against the tree. He is uh, a young man... Um, it's hard to tell a height sitting down. He's seeing crisscross applesauce. He has uh, um, one of those satchel backpacks that's just sitting there laying up against his, his uh, thigh. He has a book in his hands, and he, he's looking down reading it very, very intently. Um, he has dark black hair and very large, round, perfectly round glasses that he has over bright green eyes. He's wearing a, a Coltrass uniform like um, all of you all. But um, over his uh, blazer, he actually is wearing a hoodie against the wind. The wind's uh, kind of strong still, and it has been tossing up his hair. He has very much uh, bedhead as well. But as you, you walk closer, you expect at least like somebody to, to look up when you're approaching. But he doesn't acknowledge your presence at all. He seems to be much more intent on reading the book. Um, how long have you been going to Coltrest? Um, a long time. <laughs> so go ahead and make a, um, hey, I remember you roll. Okay. This is just going to be, this is just going to be a D100 to see whether or not you recognize this particular student. No. <laughs> oh. oh my oh. god <laughs> wow um how <laughs> yeah you you might have passed this kid in the hallway or sat behind them in that one class maybe nah probably yeah. not you have no clue who the hell this is they don't go here as far as you're concerned <laughs> Yeah, but uh, he seems to be pointedly ignoring your presence and just reading that uh, black leather bound book that he has and uh, just kind of pulled up and has his head down and very much ignoring you. And I see the title of the book. Um, You can see the, the book clearly. It, it's just a, a very, very dark, old, worn leather cover, but there's no name on the spine or the the um, front binding whatsoever. Hello? No response. Are you okay? Are you alive? <laughs> he turns the page in the book. <laughs> Go ahead and give me a persuasion check. She's just like, he's totally ignoring me. This is adorable. Maybe he's a cultist! <laughs> uh, persuasion? Everyone who's mean is a cultist. <laughs> <sighs> What'd you get? 19. With your 19, um, you, you kind of bend down and wave your hands in front of him. Hello, hello, are you alive? <laughs> and you see him very patiently put his finger in the page close it over that finger 
very slowly look up at you, keep looking up into a very, very clear and firm eye roll before he looks back down and says, Yes? I don't know. You were There was this whole big commotion and you were just not moving. So I was slightly concerned. Yeah. <laughs> looks at you very confused and then turns and at, at this moment you can see Damien like trying to convince his fellow players to, to leave this whole thing alone he, he looks over there and he said then looks back at the book and says <laughs> chocks who cares about them what are you reading it's an interesting looking book at your mention of the book, you see him very quickly put it into his, the inner pocket of his blazer. And he's like, this... Ha ha, he lost his place. Nothing <laughs> you would really be interested in. Uh-huh. What's your name? What do you care? I'm curious. What's your name? Cat. Cat. Katrina. God. I hate cats. Things are... Ugh. All they do is bug you and bug you and bug you. God, cats suck, don't they? Okay. Cats can be um, interesting sometimes. Cats can be dicks. All cats are dicks. Ah. Uh. You, you love everybody, don't you? You hate jocks, you hate cats. You, is there anything you like? I like being left alone. And that's the first time he actually looks up and he meets your eyes. Go ahead and give me... Um... Go ahead and give me an insight check. Insight, insight, insight. Don't forget to call it your rolls. Uh, 16. Not too bad. No, not bad at all. Um, at the moment his eyes meet you, like, you get a pretty clear sense of this guy. Like, from outward demeanor, he just seems disgusted and repulsed by the fact that you're even there. But you can see in that look a very cold, calculating, perceptive gl glare that comes um, back at you. It's it's almost as if he's reading you. Like you 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 his eyes never leave you. But for a moment, you almost feel kind of naked there, as though he's peering into your soul. He eventually says, Oh, pretty sure the lunchtime's about over. And like half a second later, you hear, That's the annoying bell. An annoying school bell. Letting you know that lunch is over. The kid stands up, kind of uses the tree as a brace. And at, once he stands up, he very pointedly walks around you. But then in the last second, he turns back and he says, The name's Ronan. Don't bug me again. And then he turns and walks away. Weird guy. Um, she wants to, uh, she put her soul gem on a necklace that's kind of tucked into her shirt and she just wants to peek at it, make sure it's <laughs> not glowing or anything. Um, <laughs> it's weird look into my soul moment. <laughs> that was really, really weird. Like, <laughs> you, you kind of stand there a little bit and you, you can't help but get have a little bit of the heebie jeebies um, from that interaction. But he, he gave you his last name at the very least, Ronan.
you all make your way back into the lunchroom just as lunch is ending. You have a moment to kind of compare notes uh, with one another, but um, it's time for class. The bell has rang. So you all start hurrying to make your way to the rest of school. And today is, well, an A day. So let's see here. There it is. So today is an A day for those of you who, who weren't sure. And uh, fourth uh, period is actually fine arts. So you all start making your way there. Now, fine arts is taught by. Oh, I'm blanking on the guy. There we are. So, um, fourth period is fine arts, which is uh, taught by Miss Francine Ambrosia. And this is uh, kind of what she looks like. Oh, while I'm at it, why don't I go ahead and show you this? Because this is the first time we actually were actually in a classroom. So I'm going to show you what the classrooms look like. So this right here is actually um, art from the Magi Awakening uh, Player's Handbook. One of the cool uh, pieces that uh, the Magi Knights team lent to us for this campaign. Take a look at that. That's some beautiful artwork right there. In that. What do the what do the motivational posters say? I see possibilities and adversity, but Yeah, uh they actually do say something, but I don't know. I'd have to ask them just because she told us that she really wrote something there. Oh uh, yeah, I can see when... it does say something underneath it, but I can't read what it says. Oh well. I like I'm the I hate Mondays. Possibilities is when you become, but I can't. I don't know the rest of it. But there you go. Isn't that cool? So if you like that art, got to pick up the Magic Knights book. <laughs> but anyway, um, fourth period, like I said, is uh, fine arts with Miss Francine Ambrosia. So. I'm going to be needing everyone to roll either a creativity or a performance check for this class. Now, the way school periods work is every class um, you roll to see how you did during that class. The DC is dependent on what kind of day today is. It's the first day of school, so, you know, it's not really super complicated of a day. But um, you have to roll either for this, either a creativity or performance. And if you roll over the DC, you get a success. If you roll a nat 20, you get two successes. If you roll under the DC, you get a failure. And if you roll a nat 1, you get two failures. At the end of each school block, so there's your AM classes and your PM classes. At the end of those three classes, you tally up your successes and your failures. And if your successes are in the positive, something good happens. If they're in the negative, something bad happens. Since so three classes, the maximum possible is six, right? Technically, yes. Okay. No, I'm just making a, a little counter thingy for it in case, you know, since we're going to probably stop soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will be, but I'm going to get us through um, the class phase, and then that's where we're going to end things for tonight. Okay. Don't worry about that. But, um, okay. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go around the table and have everybody tell me what they roll. And first, this time, we're going to go with Katrina. What did you roll? Uh, ten. I think that kid took her <laughs> put her off today. <laughs> That, yeah, you know, um, <coughs> that kid kind of has drawn your, your attention for the most part and, and is bugging, kind of bugging you a little bit. But fortunately, today isn't really a hard day at all. And a 10 just 
fail. It just succeeds. Ooh. Uh, Levi. I got a 15 on performance. That's a success. Melody. I got nine, a nine. And That's a failure. So I, I would actually like to use my, uh, what is that called? Fate die? Or my friend. Oh, um, I can't remember your friend's help? Your, your social person. Yes. <laughs> Uh, if fate. that's okay, because I only need one to pass, right? So, yeah, you, you, um, it seems like you only need one to pass. They roll a d4 yes. as long as you don't hit a zero. Yeah, I'm, 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 no matter what, you're going to hit a one. So, so yes, if, if you use your um, your friend's help for the day, that would be one success. Okay, David. Twenty-two success, Damien. Uh, 25. Success. Aisha. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, 14. Success. I got all my bad rolls out of the way, I guess. <laughs> so which one's the teacher's pet, the 22 or the 25? I would say probably the 25 is the teacher's pet. Damien, um, you're feeling pumped after um, getting your team to, to leave that alone. You're, you're riding that high, and just things are coming naturally to you. And the teacher's uh, kind of impressed by this and kind of pats you on the back and, and says, well done, well done, Damien. I'm very proud of you. Your next class is science. And science is taught by, oh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Yep, that is taught by Mrs. Mildred Valcon. Oh, and I actually forgot to show you all um, what what uh, Francine looks like. So let me go ahead and show you that here real quick. She, she's a golden-skinned woman with dark hair that's kind of braided and pulled back. She always wears a very nice suit with um, with a skirt. She's a attractive uh, middle-aged lady. Um. Mrs. Valcan, a little bit older, light of skin, light of hair, bright blue eyes. Um, she tends to dress more like a, a school marm from the 1900s. <laughs> For this class, like I said, I'm going to need from you a medicine or a stem check. So go ahead and roll. Quick question. Um, yeah. The... Are the character models supposed to be showing up on the stream, or just? Um, I haven't been been doing all of that. No, I can though. Got it. Okay. Just in case yeah, anybody just... was worried, you know, curious about yeah. what they look like. So I, I typically I for a lot of these I'll actually um go in and edit that for the YouTube channel. Got it. Cool. That's time. But anyway, um. Let's see. Aisha, why don't you go ahead and go first? Yeah, natural one. Oh, that <laughs> is two failures, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. So you, when you add up your, your successes and failures, the, the negatives and the positive cancel each other out. So you're technically at negative one right now. Um, Damien. Uh, an 11. 11, success. David. You're fucking kidding me. It's a it's natural a one. one. It's a one. It's a natural one. Yeah, that is a nat one. That is two failures. Your best class. Um, Mrs. Valcon, she just comes over and, and looks at you and she says, "David, I don't know what's going on, but this is the first day of school. You should be doing a a lot better than this. I, I this is not what I would have expected from you. I made How this could child you fail to do a test. We haven't even had one yet. I made this child to do one." one thing one thing only and he can't he can't do it nope <laughs> i'm so upset school sucks yep <laughs> <laughs> melody i got a 15. that's a success levi uh, i'm assuming that this doesn't count as social check so a nine will be one failure that is a failure um, cat. Twenty-two. That's a success. 
Your um, final class for today is physical education with Coach Appleman. Coach Appleman is just a huge, burly man that is typically always looking sunburnt. He, uh, bright, bright, bright red skin, um, big O, big O, um, military style, um, mustache. You, you know, the, the ones that go all the way down to the chin. I'm blanking on the name right now. Like the Hulk Hogan style mustache. He, he has, yes, the handlebar mustache. Thank you. Um, he, with that and, and just this really clean cut, um, military style haircut. I'll go ahead and show you that guy right here too. He says, oh, "Okay, God. everybody, it's time to run some laps." And that's all he really makes everybody do for this class. Um, so I'm going to need everybody to make either an athletics or a coordination check. Hey, uh, Matt. Yeah. So he looks like the guy I just posted in the Discord. Kenny Powers um, from Eastbound and Down for uh -huh. people in the, on Twitch who are in the Discord. <laughs> only one I could think of when I saw that <laughs> picture. Eh, <laughs> maybe. Eh, a little no, bit. you're right. You're right. Yeah, a little bit. Percent correct. That's little little bit. You said athletics or what? Or coordination. Uh, they are both the same for me. Damn. Okay, well, with a damn, tell us what you got. Natural 20 for a 23. Nice. That's two successes. Katrina. 22. 22, success. Aisha. A 19. 19, success. Damien. I also got a 19. Also a success. David, you get to add four to your roll. What did you get? Uh, 14 after that. 14. Success. Melody. I got a 6. 6. That is a failure. So go ahead real quick and tally up your failures and your successes. And I'm going to walk around the table one more time and have everyone tell me what you got. Starting this time with David. I am so, I'm so upset. I'm so fucking upset. <laughs> Okay, but what did you get? Uh, zero. I got it. I got it perfectly even. I got two failures Perfect. and two successes. Well, keep up the positive attitude. You're doing okay, but things could be better, and there is no change to your stats. Melody. Positive one. Positive one. You as well. Keep up that positive attitude. You know, you're doing okay. Could have been worse. Levi. A net plus two, good sir. Net plus two. You're naturally talented. You're finally starting to figure things out. Um, and you, you would normally be able to remove one stress point if you had it, but you don't have that. I don't. Mm -hmm. Katrina. Three. Three. Success. You have a bright future ahead. The more you think about it, the more you realize your future has a lot of potential. You get to remove two stress points if you have any. Aisha. Zero. <laughs> Zero. Keep up that positive attitude. You're doing okay, but it could have been better. Damien. Three. Three. Three successes. A bright future is ahead of you. Um, if you had any stress, you would you would have removed it, but you're you're pretty good right now. So that's it. Well, guess what, everybody? It is the end of your school day. It's been a long day. You've had some highs, you've had some lows, ding dong, bang but bong. we're going to go ahead and end things here for tonight and pick up in two weeks time with your uh, free time phase. It should be fun. Now, at the end of every session, we always go around the table and have everybody tell us who they were and where we can find you on the internet. Who did I start with last week? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know. So I let's just first. go. Yeah, go for it. Uh, 
So, my name is Steven, aka Togapika. Uh, you can find me here Mondays from 3 to 6 for the Debauchery Circus campaign, and then I am also obviously here for the Magic Knights campaign. Uh, other than that, I'm on Discord as Togapika if you're interested in chatting. Try to be a friendly guy. Absolutely. Um, Ashley, how about you? Um, I'm Ashley, and um, there's. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Magic Nights, and that's about it. So That's okay. Um, Hannah, how about you? Hi, um, I'm Hannah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Hannah Dory. At some point, it'll show up on my nameplate, or already did. Anyway, um, on top of being here with all of these lovely people, um, I'm going to be started playing on Singularity Roleplay, a City of Mist campaign, where I'll be playing a much different, much more misanthropic uh, trans hacker girl, so look forward to that. And Spoilers, she's a rift of Loki. <laughs> awesome. Los, you're next. Yeah, um, I'm Los. Uh, social is uh, PDX Homebrew, uh, TikTok, Twitter, all of it. Um, <clears throat> this is it. This is what I do for fun. So uh, you can hang out with me on, on any of the socials, and, and otherwise, uh, you know, I'll keep seeing you here every other week. Absolutely, Tensei. Uh, hello, my name is Tensei. I have been playing. Uh, David Copeland, the prodigy who can do no wrong, except in rolling. You can find me all over the internet at Tensei Dragon, T-E-N-S-E-I-D-R-A-G-O-N, primarily found on Bard Rock Cafe, soon to become the Bard Rock Network of Shows. We've got a whole bunch of stuff launching later this year. Uh, come come check out the Discord. We got We got tons of shows and tons of opportunities and lots of cool stuff coming up. Uh, but more immediately, you can catch me tomorrow evening over on twitch.tv slash neon lights roleplay uh, playing Kai Kudo in the Naruto 5e game A Blade's Will. Very cool. Where I will try to throw more people off blimps. <laughs> <laughs> Always fun. Uh, Kira, your last. Um, I'm Kira, and I'm the assistant creator of Magi Nights with my husband, Derek. And um, you can, if you just Google Magi Dash Nights, you can find us anywhere on all the social media and our website, and um, which is magi-nights.com. And then I also uh, wrote the children's book, and I wanted to have a copy of it up here with me, and I forgot. So I just looked up the picture. Um my dad the game master um which is just about well, a little girl who uh appreciates all that her dad does as a game master um okay. which i originally wrote as a gift for for derek and then ended up publishing it later so um i think that's about everything <laughs> yeah very cool um is that on amazon oh yes on amazon yeah Check that out on Amazon then. Awesome. Okay. Well, I am Matthew R. Dawson, your friendly neighborhood host and magic keeper for this playthrough. Um, been a lot of fun. You can find me on my socials as at Scruffy Wanderer on the tweets and the instas. Um, I also run the um, Random Rhapsody Twitter feed and kind of everything we do here on Random Rhapsody. Um, beyond uh, this channel, you can find me over on Lost Caravan RPG's channel every so often, and also on the Transverses All on the Table TTRPG content, where um, I'm, most of the time I'm a player, um, occasionally I'm a producer, and uh, on over on Lost Caravan I kind of play mostly, but I might be doing some more things here in the future. But yeah, so come check me out on all of those, or check me out here on the Random Rhapsody Network every Monday and Wednesday. So, on behalf of everyone in the cast and crew here, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. We very much appreciate it. So long. Good luck. It's been a delight. And until next time, may your dreams be infinite. Good night, everybody. Nighty night. Yeah.